I'm David Meltzer, and welcome to Two Minute Drill. Each contestant will get two minutes to pitch, then they will answer one question and get feedback from our other featured judges. I'll be giving my good points throughout the pitch and during the answer. After the pitches are complete, our JA Impact judge, Scott Absher, CEO from Shift Pixie, will decide which pitch has the greatest impact and a donation will be made to Junior Achievement University worldwide. Finally, our closer, Rory Kataya, the CEO from Verb Technologies, will decide our champion, who will receive over $50,000 of cash and prizes. We'll be right back to hear our first pitch here on Two Minute Drill. Welcome back to Two Minute Drill. With me are our judges, Rory Kataya, the CEO of Verb Technologies, and Jason Waller, CEO of Power Home Solar. Now let's get started. Marco Antonio Rodriguez is the CEO and co-founder of Miche Miche Marlin Micheladas. Marco Antonio, your two minutes starts now. Hi, my name is Marco Antonio, co-founder and CEO of Michi Michi Marlin Micheladas. If you ever partied in Cabo, Cancun, or somewhere near California's beaches, you've likely had a Michelada or were partying around somebody that was drinking some. Micheladas are a specialty craft tomato-based beer mixed with fresh lime juice, spices, our secret ingredients, plus your favorite beer to make a Michelada. My passion for making Micheladas really comes from my love for my mom and dad. They're a fisherman in Ocotlan, Jalisco, Mexico, and migrated to the United States as farmers. They work backbreaking work for years until they saved up enough money in 2007 to start their first Mexican seafood restaurant in Fairfield called La Costa Azul. In 2009, during the housing crash, they almost lost everything, but somehow, some way, they kept going. They found that they created a product that kept clients coming back for more. And over time, they went from a struggling business to the number one rated Mexican seafood restaurant in the area. Fast forward to 2019, and we took first place in Sacktown's Michelada Bash. We're expecting to have the very best year of business we've ever had, but then COVID-19 shut us down. Rather than quit, we doubled and tripled down and decided to bottle our product. We invested more money, time, and effort into ads, marketing, brand alignment with professional athletes, and working with restaurant owners that are in need of a product like ours. You see, we solved the problem. Restaurants want a product like ours, but it requires way too many ingredients. It's hard to get the taste right. And it's time consuming, which means that it could cost more, more for business owners to add this to their menu. We solved that issue by adding all our premium ingredients into a simple, easy to pour bottle that they could buy now for their restaurant. Dave, judges, with your help and these $50,000, I believe that we could be in every restaurant, stadium, and household in America. You see any reason why you wouldn't want to work with us? Marco, uh, Michi, Michi, lot. I love the name. Love it. Love it. I think it's great. And the backstory, amazing. But I, I think you already know that distribution is the key to the success in your business. So selling to local restaurants, I think, is, is a great start and build up a following. But how do you expect to conquer the whole distribution thing where that's going to allow you to scale? We're producing all of our sauce in our restaurant right now, but we've already started thinking about the future and looking at other partners that could produce our product at a mass scale. We're not at that point yet, but when we are ready for it, we will make those phone calls and make it happen. Marco, Jason here. Listen, the product's great. I love the design of the bottle. Let me ask you this, Do you, with the $50,000 you get, what kind of strategic marketing are you gonna start? Is it gonna be on social media? Is it gonna be for employee base or is it gonna be for the distribution? What are you gonna allocate those funds for? That's a great question. We've already invested a lot of money into our Facebook and ad strategies. We found that some of them weren't working, so it's time to pivot. We're moving more towards marketing, towards restaurants and businesses, because we believe that they have a problem that we have solved. Uh, so that's our next target market so we could expand. Too many people, when they're pitching, don't take advantage of the technology, the set, the stage that you created to help compel us to understand what you're asking for. Where you have an area of improvement is there wasn't enough quantitative analysis. I think as you look to the questions that Rory or you look to the questions that Jason had, then you'll realize that there was no quantitative analysis of here's the size of the market, here's the capital that may be needed. So I think uh, next time, as you're pitching people, get a little bit more meat on the bones to articulate the quantitative value of where you're at and where you think you will be. 
Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you for that, Dave. Appreciate that. I'm excited to hear our next pitch from Albert Navarro, the CEO of Metric Lock Security. Albert, you're up on Two Minute Drill. Hi, my name is Albert. I'm the founder and CEO of Metric Lock Security. We're seeking a 50,000 uh, investment group, $50,000. Uh, for 10 percent equity in our company what metroblock is is we're a biometric security company that focuses on protecting consumer valuables and the reason why i started metroblock is because in 2019 i went to mexico city and when i got out of the airport and into my hotel i actually realized that my luggage was tampered with and someone had stolen the necklace my mom had given me for christmas and so when i got back i actually realized that the fbi reported over seven million property related thefts that easily could have been prevented by one of our smart locks and so it's really simple no one however no one wants to buy a lock anymore if they have to remember a key or uh, remember a code. And so what makes us different is there are no keys, there are no codes. Literally, your finger is a key. So it's really simple. Once you uh, register your fingerprint, you just tap and you go. And that's it. And so we have different variations. So we do have our utility lock for outdoor gates and garages. We have our bike lock for bicycles and scooters. And we're going to introduce a TSA travel lock for those that like to travel. And so the smart lock industry is actually expected to uh, actually racked in $1.2 billion in revenue in 2019. And I expect it to grow to over $2.3 billion by the end of 2023. And that's provided by Grand P Research. Um, what's changed from the last time we've been here is we actually have a wholesale athlete influencer and a fundraising program, as well as a give back program. So every single time someone purchases our smart locks, we actually provide food distribution to somebody that's less fortunate. Uh, we did start selling at the beginning of quarter four, and we have just under $15,000 in revenue. And um, we do have 25 affiliates in our ambassador program that are promoting these products. What we're finding is people at gyms, schools, love our products for their lockers, their bags, their backpacks, people that travel for their luggage, and then homeowners. Um, and so what's next for us is going to be to push these products through larger marketing campaigns and so uh, at inventory costs. And so we want to provide a convenient, secure, and dependable smart lock. So our question so I, I really, again, lo loved your energy, uh, loved the pitch. Uh, we, you know, whenever you can in any way show a demo of the product like you just did in yours, I mean, that just speaks volumes. And I would encourage all of the other contestants to really give some thought to that. I think that's, uh, that makes a big, big difference when you can actually see it. And uh, the way you demoed it, I thought, very cool, very effective. But this smart lock space is is really competitive now. There's there's a lot of big players in it, massive players in it. You already said the billions of dollars that this this whole industry is generating in 2019 and what's expected in 2020. How are you going to compete? What's your strategy to compete with the big guys entering the space? Yeah, that's a good question. So we actually have uh, so right now we're starting off with 25 ambassadors, um, and so we're actually projecting to have over 100 um, by the end of this year. Um, to make that grow. Uh, we also have different businesses locally that are lined up once the pandemic's over to showcase our products. Um, we do have uh, our businesses actually, um, we're lined up to be at CES as well. So really mass projecting this product through larger marketing campaigns on social media. Influencer marketing is a big space we want to tackle uh, with the funds. And so we really, we're really trying to tackle every angle of marketing and to be able to showcase the product um, to make an impact and really replace the average padlock is what we want to do. So when you think about using ambassadors and, and, and that kind of distribution, you need to think about what you should expect from each ambassador. You need to establish some metrics around that. But good job. Good job. Great job, Albert. Uh, once again, I think it's interesting, the six-month charge. I love what you have up on the back, but be careful when you have something that needs an engineering of vision because six months charge can be seen as a positive or a negative. So when you're doing a pitch, the purpose is to stimulate interest. So we don't want to present items that could cause resistance because some people are like, I don't want to charge this thing. I, I, I use my lock six months. Other people are like, wow, six months, that's a long time. Those are the things we want to leave out of our pitch in the part of stimulating interest. When we're managing developing that vision, Honesty, illumination, all those things. So just as a, as a quick point out for you. The other side is this is built for Kickstarter, where you are at the stage. This is a perfect product for that type of uh, opportunity for you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Stay tuned for more great pitches on Two Minute Drill. But first, here's a tip of the day from Jason Waller with True Underdog Podcast. 
Hey, I'm Jason Waller, True Underdog Podcast, with your tip of the day for the two-minute drill. Be more interested than interesting. Show that you've done your research on the people that you're pitching to. While it may not help you close a deal, showing that you've done your homework on the people you're talking to will show that you're more serious than the typical person. Welcome back to Two Minute Drill. Now let's get to our next contestant. Our next big time pitch comes from a big time player, the Gronk, Chris Gronkowski. Chris is the CEO of Ice Shaker. Chris, your two minutes starts now. Oh yeah, what's up David? It's great to see you again. Chris Gronkowski here, my company is Ice Shaker. Uh, man, let's see, started about four years ago as a product that I wanted for myself. Uh, it's an insulated kitchen grade stainless steel shaker bottle that's gonna keep your drink cold for up to 30 hours. I was fortunate enough to get onto ABC Shark Tank just six months into the company and received offers from all five sharks. At that point, we had about $80,000 in sales and over the next 12 months, we did over 3 million. We think we have a huge opportunity in front of us for 2021 and we're looking to 2X the company again. The one thing that we don't have is an amazing sales team. We've never had a sales team at all. And the one thing I'm not good at is sales. So today I'm here looking for some advice. I need someone that could come in and absolutely crush it for us. Someone that could build an amazing sales team for us, but also put the processes in place to help us seamlessly 2X the company over the next 12 months. So David, do you have any advice for me or do you have that person that could come in and build that team out for me? I, I'll tell you, I, uh, I, I love the pitch. Um, you've got an asset in, in your celebrity that most startup companies don't have. And, you know, it, to get a business off the ground, one of the things that you have to deal with, one of the challenges that you have is awareness. So bringing celebrity to it is is a, an enormous, enormous advantage. You need to figure out how to leverage that better. Not that you're doing a bad job. And I definitely would not underestimate your, your talent and skills as a salesperson because you come off great. And I think you really want to take advantage of that. But I totally agree. If you can get the right kind of sales manager that knows how to build a sales team, Team, knows how to obtain distribution, then you've got a winner. It, it almost doesn't even make a difference what the product is. So uh, hats off to you. Congratulations. You're thinking about it the right way. Uh, good pitch. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we have used the celebrity and you know, a ton of exposure has came from it. But the one thing that you don't get out of this exposure is that personal relationship. You know, when you really meet someone in person, when you have a sales team, and you make that face to face connection. There's a way bit, you know, it, it's huge it, and it's something that lasts forever. And um, that's kind of the one thing that we're missing. So uh, exposure has been amazing. Uh, I, I really do a good job myself. Uh, my family really helps me out as well. And, and the celebrities that have invested into the company have done a really good job for us as well. But we're really missing that one piece. And that's that personal connection. The easiest way to find someone to lead your sales business, it, it's the easiest way to ask for help, is find someone that is where you want to be and then ask them for direction. So there's so many people that are in that space, you know, and you know the, the competitors that have different nuances of your product. There's multiple channels that exist, but you want someone that has 10, 15 years of selling into the channel, marketing into the channel, sees not only what we can do today to make money, but preparing for the differences that they can leverage 15 years of situational knowledge and relationships. So when they walk into a Dick's Sporting Goods, they already have the credibility. It takes five minutes to get the ice shaker on the shelf. You need to find someone that sits in the situation. And your last ask, which I love, which is Dave, do you know anyone that can help me? I absolutely do. So after the show, please reach out. You did a fantastic job and don't sell yourself short. You're almost as good as a sales uh, person as your brother, Rob. <laughs> hey, he's pretty good, man. He's pretty good. He's self-proclaimed the best marketer in the world. <laughs> he is. He is self-proclaimed. Humility, not maybe his uh, best suit, but yours, it fits on perfectly, my friend. Thank you so much for your pitch. We appreciate you. you. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. With us now is Sally Ann Reese to tell us about her company, PlayOn. Sally, take it away. Thank you, David, for this opportunity to pitch PlayOn, an online platform for the amateur sports and recreation world. We're the first and only sports management platform that offers our community an online network 
similar to what Spotify does for music and TripAdvisor for travel. As a founder and CEO of PlayOn and behalf of our team, I'm delighted to invite financial investments of $25,000 or more to accelerate our top line revenue growth. David, did you know that one third of the U.S. population spends $150 per month on sport participation? Annually, this is a $200 billion marketplace where transactions to date have mostly been managed on paper or spreadsheets. And Play On aims to change that. Now, a little about me. Over the past 25 years, I've been a business leader on the founding teams of eight successful new ventures, including TiVo and Bina Technologies. A couple of years ago, I found myself helping my daughter's basketball instructor, Coach Barry. It was then that I discovered a serious problem in the industry, and I recognized an opportunity. Coach Barry had been running his activity camps for 15 years, and like 2 million other program organizers, Barry focuses on coaching. He's good at that, but he wasn't good at operations. Recruiting participation, participants, collecting money, and communications are tough. And at night, Barry was spending hours responding to emails about logistics and program offerings. He was frustrated, and as were the players and parents. So we built Play On, providing both organizers and athletes an all-in-one solution that helps manage sports involvement. And Play On's better than any traditional sports management software because we are the only ones offering an instant and turnkey solution for all activities, including youth and adult programs, leagues and tournaments, sport camps, and after-school pursuits. We have loyal customers, revenue, and traction, and our funding will be used to expand our customer base, at that key metric that drives our revenue growth. And despite COVID-19, people still love to do sports, even if it means pivoting from competition to training. Sally, great pitch. I've got four kids. All of them have played sports. So I get excited about hearing youth sports. Is your customer, let me understand, is your customer a local youth football league that needs support? Or is it David and his kids are signing up to join in the city? Which is that? No, it's, it, it's more like the person who ends up volunteering to say, uh, I'll get everybody signed up and paid. So it is that guy, that local guy who's organizing a community event or a community league or an adult beer league. Uh, it's interesting because one of my biggest pet peeves of pitching is not leaving enough time for the ask. There's not a pitch unless you have an ask and you can't out ask the universe, as you know. So make sure timing wise that you save time for the ask. And I think unraveling the story. This is a classic example that you have all of these great values that you're giving and you are at a certain stage, but the story could be told so that people can follow, hey, this was the need. I was a mom of these kids and we were trying to form this league and you could tell it as a story while you're integrating where you're at as a business and the quantitative value that you now provide and why this is such a great thing to blank, which would have been your ask. Otherwise, great job. I do love your background as well. Way to use the technology. Use the technology, everybody out there, when you're pitching. It's a huge advantage, Zoom, when you're selling right now because you can have all kinds of cheat sheets everywhere. Great job, Sally Ann. Thank you, David. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on Two Minute Drill. Hi, this is Scott Epps, your CEO at ShiftPixie, here to present this week's Impact Award on behalf of Junior Achievement Worldwide. When deciding which entrepreneur to present the Impact Award to, the first question I ask is whether that person's company or idea is truly making the world a better place for us all to live in. When I heard what Sally Ann and PlayOn are doing to give our youth more opportunities to participate in sports, I was immediately sold. The lessons that kids learn while playing sports not only have an impact on their self-confidence, but the life skills they gain from participating will benefit them and their communities for years to come. Sally Ann, a thousand dollar donation has been made in your name to JA Worldwide to continue their mission of equipping young people with the employment and entrepreneurship skills to thrive right now. Congratulations, Sally Ann. Welcome back. Now the moment we all have been waiting for. Rory, the CEO of Verb, will choose the best pitch and the winner of over $50,000 in cash and prizes. Rory. Who do you have as a winner for this week's Two Minute Drill? So let me give you a little bit of background on this and, and what was behind the decision making. So look, we love entrepreneurs. We wanna foster that entrepreneurial spirit, right? And what entrepreneurs need to recognize is that when they're delivering their pitch, 
The audience wants to hear a story. It's a story that's going to resonate. People don't want to be sold, right? We, we, you and I have talked about this many times. They don't want to be sold. They want to buy, but they don't want to be sold. They want to hear a story. And there was one particular contestant that pitched in the form of a story, he gave his background, his family, and I thought that was really interesting and it certainly resonated with me. But there was something else. There was something else that set this particular contestant apart. As we all know, we're living in very difficult times. COVID has been devastating uh, on, on so many levels, for businesses in particular. And if you look around at, at other entrepreneurs and businesses, you'll see that some people just kind of give up. They're sort of sitting it out on the sidelines waiting to figure out what's next. What should I do? This particular contestant said, I'm doubling down. I'm going for it during this period of time. I'm going to grow my business. And that is the kind of entrepreneurial spirit that's a winner and that we want to reward. And that person was Marco Antonio Rodriguez. Hey, congratulations, man. Really great job. I will tell you, I would bet on the jockey as well. And you are a heck of a jockey. So uh, we congratulate you. You're going to have over $50,000 of cash and prizes, Marco Antonio. What are you going to do with the winnings? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to reinvest it back into the business. So we could take this where we believe it can be. You know, I, I learned something from Gronk here and, and the need for a sales team. And it's something that we're that's missing in our business for distribution. And with your guys' help and this money, we want to take it to that next level. And uh, we believe we could do it. So thank you. I love what he just said. He learned something from another contestant. You were listening to what they were saying. You saw what they did right and maybe what they did wrong. Good. Good looking out. That's exactly what you need to be doing. Hey, we want to have our little toast here with our Michi Michi That's Marlins, right? Get right? the Michi Michi on, girls out, out here. There. Thank you so much. Am I ready? Thank you, fellas. And once again, congrats to Marco Antonio, who's taking home $50,000 in cash and prizes. Thank you, Scott and JA Worldwide. Thank you to all of our contestants. And most importantly, thanks to Clarity Experiences for providing this unbelievable production and amazing show. And of course, thank you to all of our generous sponsors for providing over $50,000 of cash and prizes to our contestants. Remember everyone, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. See you next week on Two Minute Drill. Um, I think the feedback was great. I think it, delivering the pitch uh, is always fun, but I think the feedback is even better. Man, best part, definitely uh, getting some advice from experts that have been there and done that before. Oh uh, man, I, I think it is to, to just go for it. You know, entrepreneurs, they go for it. They put the money on the line, they double down, and that's exactly what I needed to hear. That, that's what I thought as well, and um, I'm glad they confirmed it for me. Uh, hearing all the pitches of all the different people and actually really agreed with the uh, judge's choice. I thought the fellow did a great job in telling the story. So it gave me a lot of tips. <laughs> I thought it was interesting when he said, when he said uh, people don't like to be sold, um, which I, you know, it's a good reminder. The best part about being on this show was really the lessons, you know, that I learned from beginning to the end, developing my story really allowing me to reflect back on how far we've become to where we are now and just all the possibilities of what the future have. You know, besides that, probably the best other experience is just winning.